OK, so today we're going to look at the essential things you should be doing with your 4K ONN box or stick. Stick around. All the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as we know, over time, any kind of device, whether it be a phone, a tablet, a TV stick, a smart TV itself, will slow down and not perform as it once did. So it's therefore essential that every so often you do some regular maintenance on it to basically get it back up and running as you'd expect. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the steps that I do. I generally do it about once every six weeks, two months, just to make sure that my device is running in tip top condition. So the first thing I do is I check to see how much space I've got left on the device and just go through the apps and just see what I don't need anymore and what I do need and also give the apps a bit of a clear out. So if we go across to the settings cog just over there, okay, and then middle button on the remote and then if we go down to system and then across and then down to storage, and then across and then across again. If we go right the way down to the bottom of this list here, there you go, you will see how much storage you've got available. Now at the moment, I've got the ONN 4K Pro and I've got loads of storage available on this, but don't leave it until you've got no storage available. Clean it up. Clean it up as soon as you can. The more storage you've got available on your device, the better the device will run. So whilst we're here, as you can see there, we've got cached data. And as you can see, it says 311 megabytes. Now, this is very easy to clear the cache data because all we do is we just highlight it, middle button on the remote control, and it asks us a very simple question, clear cache data. This will clear cache data for all apps. This is absolutely fantastic because otherwise you'd have to go through each app on the app list just like so. If I go to apps there, you'd need to go through every one of these apps and manually go through and clear the cache. I mean, a bit like the Fire TV stick, you know, when you do it on that, you have to go through and it's laborious. But thankfully, as I say, on the ONN 4K and many Android TV boxes that have got the latest system in, there you go. Under internal shared storage, you've got cached data. So go into that OK button on the remote and there you go. It clears out what it can of the cached data. So next thing is, is go across to apps. Now I should say there, it didn't clean out all of the cache data. And that's because some apps are still running and some apps are still using that cache data. So it can't clear out all of the cache data. Generally, you get a buildup of cache data straight away, even if you do clear it out manually from all the apps individually. So let's just go down to see all apps, middle button on the remote, and just go through this list here. And any apps you think to yourself, hang on, I haven't used those for a long while. I don't think I'm going to be using them in the near future. Go across to uninstall, middle button on the remote, and then middle button again, and that will uninstall the app, freeing up vital space. So carry on going down this list until you've removed everything that you think you can remove. Then the next thing you want to do is go back up to the top, OK, and go through each of these apps and go across to false stop and then OK. This will stop them from running in the background. So again, go to the next app, false stop, OK. Now, the next time you uh, you start the app again, it will run again in the background. But for now, you can go through each of these. I mean, there's some of them if like, for instance, button mapper, I've got button mapper on here. This affects my remote control. So perhaps I wouldn't want to full stop that. But apps that you know that you open, go across, go full stop them for the moment. OK, so go through each one full stop and keep going down this list. I know this is a bit of a laborious task, but it's worth doing, believe me. Now, some apps might not have a full stop on them. If they haven't, then there's not much you can do about that. Just ignore it and carry on. 
I should have also said when uninstalling apps, there might be some apps that you can't uninstall, like say for instance, some that are included with the box when you first got it or the stick when you first got it. So th something like YouTube Music here, the best you can do there is to full stop it if you haven't full stopped it already and then go to disable middle button and then middle button again and that will disable the app and stop it hopefully from accumulating more data. It won't fully remove it, but hopefully it shouldn't open up and it shouldn't accumulate more data or cache on there and it shouldn't start running in the background either. So once you've gone through and false closed all the apps or false stopped all the apps, then press the back button and the back button again and then go back down now to cached data. And as you can see there, in actual fact, the cached data has been reduced quite greatly from 261 megabytes to 33 megabytes. So just for good measure, I'm going to highlight that middle button and then middle button again to clear the cache data again, see if it makes a difference. No, it didn't that time, but it's worth doing just in case it does at a later date. So I'm just going to press the home button on the remote to go back to the main menu and I'm going to go down and across to your apps. And if you've got downloader installed on your device, as I have there, go into it and then Go across to files just there, middle button. And if you've got anything listed there, then what you want to do is you just want to delete it. There's no point in keeping anything in there. These are installation files. If you need them again to install an app, then you can just go and download them again. So highlight whatever's in there, press and hold the middle button on the remote control until this comes up and then go across to delete. And then that will delete. That will clear up some space too. So it's not all about the space on here. It's also about making sure that your system's got the latest updates so that it runs as smooth as possible. Now, all your apps that you've downloaded from the Play Store will update automatically and so will system updates, but there may be a delay in updating. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the Google Play Store and check to see if there's any updates for any of my apps in there. So all I do is I just put my finger or so all I do is I just press down on the microphone button on the remote and say Google Play Store and then let go of the button. And there you go. The Google Play Store will now open. Go up and across to your initial just up there in the top right hand corner and there under manage apps and games, you will see in updates if there are any updates available. And as you can see, mine says one pending. So with that highlighted, I'm going to press the middle button on the remote. And there you go. It says Google TV ambient mode. There is an update available. Now, this will come through automatically at a later date. But say if I want to update now, just highlight update all and then that will go ahead and it will update. Now, some apps may take longer than others to update. Just be patient with it. As you can see, that line is going across underneath the app icon. We've got to wait until the app completely disappears from the screen. Then just press check for updates again for good measure. And as you can see there, it shows you a list of what's recently been updated. The next thing we want to do is we just want to come out of this. So I'm just going back and we want to check the system for any updates. So I'm just going to go across to the settings cog up there, middle button on the remote, go down to system and then go across to about and then go across to system update and then middle button on the remote. And that will check to see if there's any updates for the Android system. If there is, let them install. Don't be tempted to turn your box or stick off while they're updating. Otherwise, it will completely corrupt it and may corrupt it beyond repair. The next thing we want to do is we want to come out of this and press the back button once and just go down until you see restart and then press the middle button on the remote control and then go up to the second restart there and press the middle button on the remote control. Now, restarting the system is a good thing occasionally because, again, that just clears out a lot of the gump in the background. So I'm going to let mine restart. The other thing you might want to do is you might also want to unplug your router or if you're in America, it's a router. Unplugging that 
and perhaps leaving it for a good 10, 15 minutes. If you can do, leave it overnight. That drains all the energy out of the uh, the router or the router and uh, gives that a bit of a refresh too to make hopefully your internet connection that little bit better. And on the subject of internet speed, you might want to download, if you haven't got one already, an internet speed test just to see what speed you're getting. So go across to apps up the top there, go down to search for apps and games and just type in there on the on-screen keyboard speed, that's S-P-E-E-D, and then go down to the magnifying glass in the bottom right hand corner of the keyboard, middle button, and then you should see, there you go, a load of speed test uh, results there. So highlight perhaps if you've got that one there, the internet speed test just on the left, highlight that middle button on the remote control and then middle button again, let it download and install. Now, if you're not sure what speeds you should be seeing on here, then consult with your internet provider, ask them what speeds you would expect to see. So they would be able to give you a rough estimate. So let's just open the app. Now I should say that the speeds will vary, especially if you're using Wi-Fi, because there's a lot of things that can impede Wi-Fi. So don't expect to get the full speed that your internet provider tells you. But if it falls far short of what your internet provider is telling you, then we need to do something about it. So let's just start the test. So just press the middle button on the remote control. So if you are getting a, uh, a low speed, now what is a low speed? Now, if you're looking for standard definition quality, then anything more than perhaps 10 megabits per second will be more than ample for standard definition. If you're looking at HD quality high definition, then probably 15 to perhaps 20 megabits per second. If you're looking at 4K, then perhaps 35 to 50 megabits per second is a good target to aim for. And if you're looking at 8K, which is very rare at the moment, I think probably 80 to 100 megabits per second. But this will tell you, it gives you like a traffic light scheme at the top of the screen. And as you can see there, I mean, my download speed, that's what we're focused on. Don't worry too much about the upload speed. Um, but my download speed is 499.73. So it means I can stream SD, HD, 4K and 8K. Also using a VPN, that can also impede your speed as well quite a lot. But if you find that you are getting a low speed, you haven't got a VPN switched on, then Perhaps try, if you can, moving your Wi-Fi router or your stick or your box to a location that's quite closer to the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi router or the box or stick. Make sure that it's not, there's nothing solid in the way of it of blocking the, uh, the signal. Even a TV, if, if the device is behind the TV, that can greatly block the signal as well. All the electronics in the, uh, in the TV can also do that. So if you, if you need to, then perhaps get an HDMI extension cable and bring the device out from behind the TV or beh from behind any solid objects. Equally, you need to ensure that your Wi-Fi router is not sat in a cupboard or behind any solid objects or even near any other wireless devices. If you can, then connect up your device with an ethernet cable that is usually better or if you can invest in a mesh wi-fi system if you have a look in my amazon store in the uh, description down below there's some recommendations in there for mesh devices not cheap but they do generally do the job much better than these cheap old wi-fi repeaters which are a complete waste of time for streaming so there we are hopefully some of the tips in this guide has helped you. If you've got any tips of your own, then please let us know in the comments down below. It would be good to hear from you. Whilst you're here, don't forget to have a look around. If you want to get to the front page of my YouTube channel in any browser, go to youtube.com forward slash Chris R. Wait. That's youtube.com forward slash Chris R. Wait. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button from that front page. Or when you're looking at any of my videos, hit that subscribe button just beside my channel name. Also, please, if you do like the video, hit that like button. And if you think your friends, your family or your work colleagues might like it, hit that share button and share it on your social media timelines. 
subscribing, liking and sharing really does help support this channel. It enables me to spend more time researching and bringing you these great videos. Also, please don't forget to check me out on X. That's x.com forward slash CW Tech, where you can find out about all my latest video releases on any platform.